Amen, amen, amen. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Let's let our musicians know we, are, we appreciate their ministry so, so very, very much. We want to say welcome to the Armerchie Church of God, regardless if you're joining us here in-house or if you're in your house, we're glad that you're in the house of the Lord today. God has certainly poured his blessings upon us this week, and we just say a great big hearty amen to the working of the Lord. I want to very quickly say that I appreciate everyone stepping up to the plate last Sunday morning when we had to leave so rapidly to head to eastern North Carolina to be with Donna Donna's family, her mother is very, very low this morning, but she's ready to go. And as I was preparing to leave late Wednesday evening, I knelt down beside her and told her, I said, now listen, young lady, I will be back to celebrate you home. I said, but I want you to go on to be with the Lord. And that is going to happen. And we know today that she's ready to meet God. We appreciate so much all of our workers that just stepped right up to the plate. Ted did an awesome job. I continued to get text messages and phone calls at the wonderful job that he did at the last minute, just stepping right up, as well as so, so many others. So we appreciate everybody being here this morning. My, 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 God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Amen. We have a busy week and things will continue to move forward. This coming Tuesday morning, Sister Linda Brown at 10 o'clock will be leading our ladies Bible study. Then Wednesday, we will not be having our senior fellowship due to the circumstances that is surrounding our family. But at 1 o'clock, Brother Lee Smoller will have... The <laughs> Brother Lee Smoller, doesn't he do a great job at that 1 o'clock devotion? Amen. Amen. And thank the Lord for his ministry. Then you want to tune in Wednesday at 7 o'clock for our virtual Bible study. We're going to have the panel back up here this week, and it is going to be wonderful. So be sure that you tune in at 7 o'clock Wednesday evening, and you can enjoy that right there in your home, talking about the power of the Word of God in the life of the believer. Then every Friday, Freedom on the Outside from 7 to 9, and we appreciate so much every worker that is reaching and making a difference in people's lives. And then Sunday morning back at 11 o'clock, and next Sunday is our fifth Sunday night night singing. It'll start at 5 o'clock. Regardless if uh, what transpires in our family, the fifth Sunday night singing will continue to move forward because life moves on in the name of the Lord. And as my mother-in-law was sitting, <clears throat> we were sitting with her, and uh, she, we were lying or just sitting there. She was lying there, and she said before she got to where she couldn't talk, She's at that point now where she can't really communicate. And she said, oh, I see Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. She said, I see Jesus. Tammy, Donna's younger sister, said, Mama, what does he look like? Does he have blonde hair? She said, oh, no. She said, I see Jesus. And then all of a sudden, when she started describing what he looked like, she started speaking in the Holy Ghost. Amen. My, my, my. And then she'd start to say something else, and the Holy Ghost would say, then she said, oh, there's Mama, there's Daddy. And Tammy once again said, what? And she couldn't speak. And every time she'd go to speak that heavenly language, my Lord, hallelujah, we've come too far to turn back now. Our feet has walked through the valleys. We've climbed mountains and crossed rivers and desert places we have known. But we're nearing the home shore, the redeemed, the chosen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you stand and let's worship God together in the name of the Lord. Lord, put your hands together as we worship him today in the name of the Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Let's worship God. Hallelujah. I started out with a made of mind. One day crossed with a bed in 
finish line. Pressing for the mark and for the bride. At times I've had to stand my ground. Satan's tried to turn me around, but I will not be hindered by his lies. I'm not, I'm not gonna walk away. I'm not too much at stake. Thank you, Jesus. 
Jesus. It, you know what? Woo. I was up at 3 o'clock this morning, and I felt God all in my house because I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. All the wealth, everything that the devil's tipped me with, no drug, no alcohol, anything. I wouldn't take it for what God's got in store for me. What I went through in the past that prepares me for my future. Don't forget that. God's got something. If you want to play it again, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Gotta make it in together. Give God praise in this house. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Y'all know this next song, so
to you for the spirit of the living God. Lord, your word declares in Luke 4 and 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he hath anointed me to preach this gospel to the poor, to set at liberty those that are held in captivity, to recover the sight of the blind and to heal the brokenhearted. God, you see everyone in this house. But, oh, Lamb of God, I pray that you would move and that you would minister through the power of your sweet Holy Spirit, that as the Word of God goes forth in Jesus' name, we give you the honor. Because, dear Lord, you're our bright and our morning star. Hallelujah. You're the Lion of Judah. You're the healing balm of Gilead. 
you are the great King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we give you praise and honor and glory in this house right now in the name of the Lord. Would you just put your hands together and applaud him. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Tell you what. Don't you like spontaneity? Going home, I'm going home. There's nothing looking person I've seen today you're the best looking person I've seen today <laughs> amen amen let's let uh, our children's church leaders know that we appreciate them as the children are dismissed let's let them know how much we appreciate their love and their work amen oh come on church give them an applaud of praise amen these are your kids Oh, hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful to know that Jesus is coming after everyone that declares that they know him and have experienced him and walk in relationship because they have experienced him as Lord. They have experienced him as king. They've experienced him as sanctifier. They've experienced him as baptizer. And we have that blessed hope down on the inside of our heart because we know Jesus Christ is coming after all of us on planet earth and it's not going to be long amen I said it's not going to be long my Lord I want you to look and consider God's amazing grace God's amazing grace you say well what is grace grace is defined as follows the spontaneous unmerited gift of the divine favor in the salvation of sinners and the divine influence of God operating in individuals for their regeneration and their sanctification. Did you get that? You might want to write that down for those of you that are taking notes. As we turn to Hebrews, the fourth chapter, look with me at the 16th verse. 
If you're happy to be in the house of the Lord, why well, won't you to shout amen? Hebrews 4 and 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Again, that spontaneous, unmerited gift of the divine favor, the divine influence of God operating in the individual's life for regeneration and for sanctification. Thank God we have not received nor will we receive what we deserve when we put our faith in God Almighty. Amen? For when we put our faith in God, we receive, beloved, His grace. When we receive the grace of God, He gives to us relief from our fears. Fears that have gripped the planet Earth today. Just the other day, I heard that there's another virus coming out now called monkey pox. And I thought, dear Lord, one virus after another virus after another virus. And then someone said in the course of the conversation, when is it all going to end? I declare unto you, I believe that we're in the last days before the coming of the Lord and the Lord declares that these last days would be the time of sorrow but know this beloved we have a hope that is steadfast and sure and we have a hope that we're covered by the blood we have a hope that we're regenerated by the grace of God we have a hope that we're sanctified by the love of God we have a hope that we're walking in the power of the blessed spirit of God. We have a hope that God eternally exists as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And if God be for us, who dare would be against us in these last days? I believe that we're on planet Earth for such a time as this. This is why the enemy tries to detour your joy. This is why the enemy tries to detour your faith. This is why the enemy tries to detour your love. This is why the cobwebs and the spider, if you're not careful, will get into your thinking. And Kathy, we would have what you refer to as stinking thinking. But oh, when we put on the whole armor of God Almighty and we put on the helmet of salvation and we put on the breastplate of righteousness and we have the sword of the Spirit and we have our girdle of truth and and we have our feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We have the marching orders. Go ye into all the world. Amen. And let your light so shine. Oh, go ahead and give him praise today in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. After all, beloved, it's the old song of the faith. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but I'm now am found. I was blind, but now I what? Now I see. Thank God today for that amazing grace of the Lord. Thank God today that kings and presidents cannot pardon our sins, but the Lord Jesus Christ came to wash away our sins. Sister, the Lord Jesus Christ came to heal our bodies. The Lord Jesus Christ came to give us a hope and is steadfast and sure. He said, be ye steadfast and sure, unmovable, abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain, because it's not by our might, and neither is it by our power, but it's by the Spirit of the living God Almighty. My Lord, give him a praise offering. Oh, you see, modern science and all that are practicing medicine cannot wash our souls white as snow, but the blood of Jesus can. Oh, hallelujah. I said the blood of Jesus can. And God's unmerited, unearned favor 
can. My Lord, t'was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Look over to your neighbor and say, you got to keep your faith in the right place. You got to keep your faith in the right place. Amen. You got to keep your faith in the right place. Donna and I appreciate so very much your prayers. Beloved, let me tell you, I'm your pastor regardless where I'm at. I have a phone that you feel free to call me at any time. Text me any time. You're not a burden. You're my brother. You're not a burden. You're my sister. We're workers together in the name of the Lord. We've got people here. All I have to do is call on Lee. All I have to do is call on others, and they're ready to respond. Just like last week, Phoebe just stepped right up here with Margarita and with the rest of them and just did what needed to be done. Ted just stepped right up here. But let me tell you something, beloved. Jesus Christ went away just like I did last week, and I didn't know when I was coming back, and I knew I was coming back because the signs of the time were telling me I needed to just leave Donna there with her family and I needed to just come on home and take care of business and pastor the church and do what I needed to do. The Lord talked to me coming down the interstate and said, son, this is how it is with me. I had needs to go back to the Father, but I'm coming back. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not coming back to preach your funeral like you're going back to North Carolina. Oh, no. I'm coming back and I'm coming back with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God's going to sound and the dead in Christ is going to rise. Oh, hallelujah. And we're going to be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. Oh, my Lord. When you stop and think about this, what about the fear factor? No, it's not the fear factor. Everybody say it's the grace factor. Say it again, those of you at home and here. It's the grace factor. Does not the Word of God declare that as your days are, so shall your strength be? Declare that right now in your soul. As your days are, so shall your strength be. Now now make it personal. As my days are, my strength shall be. Let's say it on the count of three. One, two, three. As my days are, so shall my strength be. Say it again. As my days are, so shall my strength be. By my, my. That's what he's talking about, beloved. Unearned. No fear, but grace. 1 John 4 and 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out. You know it. Come on. Perfect love does what? Casteth out. Oh, it casteth out the fear. There's a reassurance in times of danger when we have this grace of God. The apostle Paul referred to these days as perilous times. He referred to these days as dangerous times. But yet the old hymn continues to move forward through many dangers, toils, and snares. I have already come. Tis grace that's brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me on. What is it leading me on? Feelings? No. What is it that's leading me on? Welfare and friends? No. What is it that's leading me on? My bank account? That certainly isn't. Someone told me the other day that they had been hacked. And, you know, in their bank account and everything. I said, they hack in my bank account. They're going to get the surprise of their life. They're going to laugh. They're going to look at that. <laughs> oh, let me tell you something, beloved. But the devil don't care about your bank account. He don't care about your automobile. He don't care about where you live. He cares about your destiny. He cares about that hope. He cares about, he knows where you're going. Because, beloved, he used to be the worship leader there. But they beheld him as lightning falling from the heavens. Because the Lord said, pride goeth right before a fall. Oh, he hear me today when you become puffed up and you become proud you're just before fallen beloved and the best thing anybody can do for you is pray that's what happened to Lucifer that's what happened to Beelzebub that's what happened to Sustanus to the devil himself 
because he thought he had it all. Look over to your neighbor and say, I'm not enough in myself. Amen. I'm not enough in myself, but grace that brought me safe thus far, grace will lead me <laughs> going home. I'm going home. There is nothing to hold me here. I caught a glimpse of that heavenly land. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going home. Woo! Oh, let me tell you, say, Brother Moats, how do you know? Because my no knows. When you know knows, amen, when you know knows, Oh, hallelujah. We had the MIP graduation in Cleveland yesterday. I left Friday night and was there with the MIP graduates and was there yesterday as we called them out and they walked across the platform and, and shook everyone's hand and received their certificate. And I told them, I said, listen, guys and gals, I said, no matter what you face in your life and no matter what you face in your ministry, as long as your no knows. Amen. I said, as long as you know. You say, Pastor, what are you talking about? The Apostle Paul said, I know in whom I have believed. Amen. It's settled what's in for all. There was a time on earth when in the book of heavens, uh, amen, there was an old account settled unforgiven. But then my name was at the top, but I went unto the Lord, and he settled my account. And long ago, he settled it all. Long ago, he settled it all. Long ago, now on my knees he settled it all beloved when we realize we don't have what it takes in ourselves, but it takes the unmerited favor and the unmerited grace of God to get us through we are going to make it live, die, sink or swim we are going to rise in the name of the Lord Woo. my Lord preacher do you really believe all this no, no I know it you travel where we travel through the years, you know it. We've held a many hands, haven't we, Pastor? <laughs> My Lord. <laughs> Psalm 91. Woo! This here is good stuff. It's the Word. Look at verse 14. Because he has set his love upon me. Look to your neighbor and say, that means you. That means you. You mean God loves me? Let me look. Oh, I hear you, Holy Spirit. The enemy has been rum shotting, rough shotting. You know what that means? Over some of you sitting here and some of you listening by live stream. You're not good enough. I wished I'd done that. What didn't I do the other? Why did I do what? All these questions. Stop it right now. Pull that stronghold down and bring it into the captivity of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Bring it down in the name of the Lord. Listen to what he says. Because he has set his love upon me. It's grace. Of course we don't deserve it. We haven't earned it, but God has set his love upon us in spite of who we are. Isn't that awesome? And he said, he set his love upon me. I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me. Do you, are you getting this? Do you see it?
There's an old song that said, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I will call upon the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I will call upon the Lord when the devil is attacking my family, when my finances have drained, when my body is racked with sickness and disease, when I don't know what tomorrow holds, when I'm going through the valley, when I can't lift my head off of a pillow of doubt and fear, I will call upon the Lord. My Lord and my God. He shall call upon me. Notice, notice, please get this next part. What does he say? Say it out loud. Come on, participate. I will Answer, who is this? Oh, I, I got an important phone call. Oh, I, I need to take this right now. You know, I, I, this past week, this is what I had. Be talking to somebody, oh, bump, bump, I look, bump, bump, I look. Then ding, ding, I look, text messages, phone calls, text messages, phone call. But there's going to be a day, oh, Jesus is going to call. We're out of here. He said, but right now, he said, I will answer him. Look, look to your neighbor and say, go to your spiritual phone expecting it. Amen. Go, you say, Pastor, you're not participating, folks. Can, is this not on? Amen. Is this not, can you hear me, Kathy? Can you, can you hear me? Amen. You see, the devil wants you to do this. And the whole time, he's robbing you of your joy. The whole time, he's still in your family. The whole time, he's draining you dry spiritually. The whole time, you're wondering, dear Lord, what's going on? Hey, the apostle Paul told Timothy, shake it off. My God, you got to shake it off. You got to shake it off. You got to get it off in the name of the Lord. You get it off through praise. You get it off through praise. You shake it off and then you stir it up. Look over to your neighbor and say, stir yourself up. Wade Horton told me years ago, he said, one of my mentors, how I miss him. He said, when I was pastoring, he said, I tell you what, I'd have a move of God or something going on in that house if I had to turn the pews upside down. <laughs> He said, I'd do anything to get people's attention because the enemy wants you to sit dormant so he can beat you and he can beat you down and he can get you. And if you're not careful, he'll take your crown. He'll take your robe. But beloved, hear me today. I've come too far to look back. Amen. I said, I've come too far to look back. We are going home in the name of the Lord. Let's go on and look at this verse. This is the Lord speaking. He said, I will be with him in what? Trouble. Anybody ever met him? Anybody ever met her? I've pastored them. We don't have them here. Woo! Amen. I'm serious. The only thing about me being here at this stage of the game, I wish I'd got here sooner. <laughs> Trouble. Pastor in South Carolina saw this guy on the back of the church property walking around with a Doberman. We even had a basset hound back then. Our little old basset hound was going after that Doberman. And I stepped on the outside on this side of the fence I said, hello, sir, I'm Pastor Motes. I said, what's your name? He said, I'm trouble, and I'm your, mid your worst nightmare. I looked at him, and I said, you dirty, foul spirit, in the name of the Lord. He looked back at me, and he said, I own this land. 
That church belongs to me. That John Deere in that, in that garage belongs to me. And he said, I curse you. Oh, and I looked at him and I said, let me tell you something. The Lord said, I will be with him in trouble. Ah, Lord and my God. I looked at him and I said, you foul and devil spirit. I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. That dog became dorsal and that man took off and I never saw him again. Beloved, I believe it was a spirit from hell. The devil thinks he owns the church. The devil thinks he owns the property, but he don't. He can't come across the blood of the crucified Lamb of God. We're covered by the blood. We're sealed until the day of redemption. And the Lord declares upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Prevail, prevail, will not prevail. My Lord, my Lord. But he was talking about the physical church, the physical property. The devil's never talking about the physical. We become carnal, cold, indifferent, worldly, lustful, prideful, and we judge everything by what we have, not who we have. And when he said this church, he wasn't talking about that brick building. This is nothing but a building. This is not a sacred cow, and thank God you don't treat it like that. This is nothing more but a building. Amen. But the Lord said upon the authority that I am the son of the living God, I will build my church. And he said, you men that I'm calling, hold on to your seats, pre-assembly. But you women that I'm calling, ah, Lord. You, he said, you're the ones that I'm calling. You're the ones that are working with me. But I will build my church. And unless the Lord builds a church, those that labor, labor in vain. It's got to be done through the power of the Holy Ghost. It's got to be done through the preaching of the word. He said, if I be lifted up, I will will draw all men unto me. My Lord. My Lord. My Lord. You ever thought what's going to happen to all these edifices that people worship? You ever thought what's going to happen to all these temples and synagogues? The devil's going to use them after the rapture. Nothing but a building. Because the church going to be out of here. I said the church going to be out of here. When we've been there 10,000 years. My Lord, come on, John Newton. The author of this whole amazing grace. Bright shining as the sun. We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. In other words, you've stayed in love with Jesus. Are you there? You've stayed in love with Jesus. He said to the church at Ephesus, he said, you're great. You know how to have church. You get it going. Come on, folks. You get up here and my dad used to, <laughs> Lord, how I wish you would have known my dad. He said, some of them people get up there. Dad preached for 60, I think it's 66 years. He said they, he said they get up there singing them old sad songs. 
jerking a tear out of people's eyes. And he said, it's emotion. He said, oh, they get up there singing these songs going to 7,700 miles an hour. And it's not long before somebody takes off running. He said, when are we going to start shouting over the word of the living God? When are we going to start shouting because we're in the presence of the great Elohim? When are we going to start rejoicing for the unadulterated God breathe in our word of the living God? When the word goes forth in song, when the word goes forth in message, when the word goes forth in the song, when the word goes forth in a message, I will draw all men unto me. Did you get it? Did you get it? I love good singing. We got some of the best in the state of Georgia right here. You're missing it. This is your cue. I don't want no dead flip flopping frog music. Amen. I want it anointed. Anointed is not determined on how fast or how slow you sing it. The anointing is whether or not if it's given praise to him. Oh, hallelujah. Because the Holy Spirit said, I come to testify of him. My Lord, when you start singing these old songs of Zion, or you start singing these praise and worship songs, you start singing this southern gospel, you start singing the old red book and green book hymnal songs, if they're lifting up the name of the Lord, then are they a gospel song. Uh, don't give me no song. Just build me a cabin over in glory song. Somewhere. My God is bigger than that. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. This stuff's going to fade away. All this mess that we worried about is going to fade away. But one day we're going to see. We're going to see. And when we stop and think about where we're going, it's because of God's grace. You get it? You didn't earn it. I didn't earn it. You don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. But God, beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that is, loveth knoweth God. For God is love, First John 4, 7 and 8. You see, this is where the enemy is trying to put up roadblocks. John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Look over to your neighbor and say, quit it. Tell them, say, quit it. Stop this. Stop. Don't let your heart be troubled. I hear you, Holy Spirit. Mm. The Lord said, tell them again. Look over to your neighbor, folks, and say, I can't allow myself to be troubled. Come on. Come on. Gary, we can't allow ourselves to be trouble. Amen. Jody, we can't allow ourselves to be trouble. Praise God. Sister, we can't allow ourselves to be trouble. He said, you believe in God? Sort of like a question, isn't it? But then it's a statement. It's a declaration. He said, you do believe in God, but well, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. This is the truth. He said, I love this. Woo! Oh. 
He said, I go to prepare a place for you. (laughs) What is it your heart desires? God wants to bless you. Every father and mother here today, you want to bless your sons and your daughters. Some are stubborn and obstinate. Some take every dime you got. But then there's some that understands but we still love our sons and daughters unconditionally. Am I right or wrong, Mom and Dad? He said, as your father, I'm going to prepare a place for you. My Lord. God speaks to me when people start going home, even in pastoring. I can sense when there's going to be a loss before God takes them. And when my mother was passing and I left South Carolina, I was coming back down the interstate, coming down I-20. And I just hit what do you call it, channel surfing, surfing, where it just changes, changes, changes. You liable to get anything from southern gospel to hard rock to uh, memories, you know, or the, or those feelings. <laughs> then you're liable to get, I ain't nothing but a hound dog. Then you're liable to get, I am going home. But this particular day, every every time I'd hit it, it went, and it was talking, it was a song. It didn't matter if it was a country song. It didn't matter if it was a gospel song. You know, whatever station, every one of those songs had to do with losing your loved one and them going on. The other day, God began to speak to me about my precious mother-in-law, of whom I've been in her life now 41 years. I told someone the other day, I said, I've had Donna longer than they did. (laughs) That's a good thing, isn't it, Tim? But Rusty Goodman wrote a song. The old house that I'm living in is needing repair. The windows and the shutters are letting in the cold, cold air. But then he goes on and he said, but all I've got is leaving, leaving on my mind. I haven't heard that song in years, except in the Spirit when God began to speak to me. But early Thursday morning when I pulled out, coming that long way back from eastern North Carolina up next to the Virginia line, coming down I-95, I just reached over and turned it on, and guess who was singing? Rusty Goodman, guess what he was singing? Leaving on my mind. I didn't even know I was on the gospel channel or not. That's Donna's car. <laughs> and, you know, being out of town, you get all kind of channels. In the, and, I just, and, and then he said, lately, all I've got is leaving on my mind. And I just left my mother-in-law the night before. She said, oh, my, I see Jesus. And she couldn't speak for the Holy Spirit witnessing through her. Let me tell you something, beloved. We are that near to the coming of the Lord. Instead of seeing devils behind every corner and seeing devils under the automobile and seeing devils under the bed and seeing devils on the job, we need to start looking for Jesus. Amen. He said, I go to prepare a place. I will come again and receive you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Lord, receive you unto myself. My Lord, I'm going home. That where I am, I'll help finish it out. 
that where I am, what? There you may be, what? Also. You two sisters, come up here. Quick. Amen. Phoebe, come on. Get your guitar. Come on. I like spontaneity. <laughs> Amazing grace. Get a mic. Hit a button. It'll come on. Amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sounds that say.
And when the battle's over, we wear a crown, yes, we swear a crown, yes, we swear a crown. And when the battle's over, we swear a crown in that new Jerusalem. Wear a crown, wear a crown, wear a bright and shiny. you give him a praise offering? Would you give the King of Kings an ovation of praise? My Lord, Father, I pray for everyone watching my live stream. I pray that you would touch that one that is coming back. I pray in the name of the Lord that you would overshadow, move, and minister. Oh, Lamb of God, we give you the praise for what you're doing. Soak it in, folks. Soak in his presence. Soak in his presence. My Lord. My Lord. Mm. You ever been drunk on the Spirit of the Lord? My, 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 mm. my Lord. Going up the road the other day, I received a text from Brother Ted that there was this gentleman that had been watching us from the live stream. He said he felt the Spirit of the Lord as you worshiped. He felt the anointing of God as the message went forth. God brought them to Rome. They've dedicated their hearts afresh to the Lord. Jeremy, just raise your hand. Jeremy breaks a ship. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> never think, never think we're not reaching beyond these four walls because we are. We're reaching beyond these walls to this live stream, whether it's on Sunday morning or the virtual Bible study on Wednesday nights or the one o'clock devotion. And through freedom on the outside, people are coming. I thank the Lord for what he has done. Now this is what we need your help with. We want you to be happy, and we want you to be blessed. But we can only do so much and believe God for you. But then there comes a time you've got to be obedient to the Lord by bringing all your tithes and offerings into the storehouse of the Lord. And as you prepare to give, and you give a love offering this morning, if you're watching by live stream, you just... Make it payable to the Our Mercy Church of God, Post Office Box 307, Our Mercy, Georgia, 30105. But our ushers are standing ready. Let me tell you, silver and gold have we none, but such as we have, we give. But then God says, give it back. 10% and gives us 90 to live off of. God is good. Kathy? Good to see you, honey child. Amen. Tim, good to see you. It's just good to be seen, isn't it? Amen. So good to see you, honey. But we know that we're going to continue to reach out. Good to see this beautiful couple. Amen, Charles. So good to have y'all with us. Anyone else? Let's do everything that we can to bring as many on Sunday morning. Let's reach out. You see somebody that's not here? Help me. Call them. Hit the share. Let's get this service out. Hit the share. Keep hitting it on your phones. Hitting it on your computers. Share this message, this service today. Jesus is coming. My Lord. Ken, God bless you. Finest plumber in the state of Georgia. 
Amen. Got the sweetest grandbaby next to mine. Would you stand with me, please? If I may be so personal. When the time comes and my mother-in-law goes to be with the Lord and she is low, we have capable ministers to stand right in here. Brother Lee has already prepared in case I'm called away. I'll be here next Sunday, but if I'm not, Lee's ready to step right in because no one knows the day nor the hour, even in death. But we know that She's ready to go. And we release her in the name of the Lord. Amen. Isn't it good, brother? Isn't it good? Walk in this. Don't talk it away. Don't live it away. In other words, don't, don't go out and pick up a lifestyle that's going to spin what God's done for you in this service. Take that word. The devil don't want you to read it. Make yourself read it. If you got to read the same verse over and over and over, read it. Man, you'll swallow it eventually. Amen. Brother Williams, would you would you join me, please? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. My Lord. When I get to be 25, I hope I'm as capable of getting around as you are. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Would you pray a blessing over this house of faith? Father, we're so thankful to you for this day. We're so thankful for this pastor, Brother Motes, the shepherd of this flock. He loves this people more than ever. God, we appreciate you for sending him this way. Bless this people as they go home this day. We carry this message with us all through next week and hope the best for him in traveling. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. All hearts and minds rejoicing in the Lord. Amen. You got that $1,000 check ready? Well, no, I didn't hear <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Let's continue to worship God together. Amen. God bless you in the name of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you in the name of the Lord.